sure yeah, I can get on down and get out of y'all's way. So I have a little wiggle room on this one. So uh, I want to talk about something this morning that's near and dear to my heart. And actually, all the messages that I've really have uh, taught over the last decade is centered around this one symbol, this one fact. Uh, it's a truth, matter of fact. It's not a fact. It's a truth. It's a reality that's going to be uh, become a real common theme in the earth. Amen. So this morning, I'm going to talk about the greatest mystery of all. The greatest mystery of all. The greatest mystery of all. And what is that? Thank God, y'all already know it. The greatest mystery of all is not some physical conjecture. It is the incarnation of Christ. And it is that God lives in mankind. So the greatest mystery of all is that God has chosen himself, has chosen to lower himself into humanity and become a part of us. Not only as our creator, but as our father. And a living and breathing relationship with him. Amen? Amen. And that is what the good news is. The good news is not that I'm not going to go to hell. And the good news is not that I'm going to go to heaven. The good news is that I have an opportunity to be transformed. And that I can be restored back to my created value. The gospel is ultimately about transformation. That I can be restored back to my created value that was in Adam. Amen? How many of God had a value on us? Y'all looking to be real funny. Y'all want me to preach it? We'll get there, but uh, you got to, and this is really complex. This, I got to lay it down for you so you can get it, you know, because most of us don't even think about it. We just think of, we just look at the church. We don't do any, uh, uh, in-depth research and allow the Holy Spirit to open this cacophony mm -hmm. of what salvation is all about. You know, it's, it's, it's a layered thing. It's not just a one act. It's, it's not something that just happened because he uh, went to the cross. You got to understand this thing was hidden God. Ephesians 3 and 9 said some things were hidden in God. But he chose to manifest his wisdom <laughs> in the earth. And the first person who he used was Jesus mm -hmm. to manifest his wisdom. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He's infused, he infused Jesus and he became a seed sown in the earth. And the replication of that seed or the, uh, the, magnific <laughs> uh, the magnification, there you go, the magnification of that seed is left up to us. And so that act of grace, that divine act of grace is not necessarily that he came as a... a as a trump card, or he came as a person who's going to bring us out of some things. But he came that he may bring humanity up in dignity and honor in him. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. Amen? Amen? Yes. Which is our created value. We were in him. Am I right? Yes. Yes. However, there's been some things, some, some things that have been misunderstood. Tradition have crept in, made the word of God an effect. And have perverted God's original intent. And if you know anything about perversion itself is the alteration of something from its original course. That's, that is the definition of perversion. It's the alteration of something from its original course. Amen. We were called to do two things. Communion and dominion. That was Adam's whole license. That was his... His uh, resume or the expectation God had placed on him, amen, that was his duty in life was to have communion and to have dominion. <clears throat> Every Christian should likewise desire his own to CD, communion and dominion. But perversion has come in, it's crept mm -hmm. in, you know, you do any research on church history and most of us are still underneath his guys, we're still in the stupor, but I thank God that the spirit of reformation that's in the earth has been amplified as waking men up into their true identity. Yes. Amen? Amen? And we're returning. Now, anybody returning? Yes. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> I'm returning. Yes. 
returning back to my original course, my Amen. creative value. No longer distorted, no longer corrupted. No longer distorted, no longer corrupted from God's original intent. That is what you are saved to do, or that is what you are saved to become. Because if you become this, to do is easy. It's becoming it. It's putting on this persona. It's it becoming alive in you, being stirred in the deep recesses of your heart. That's how it, it won't come by osmosis. You have to have, uh, uh, it, it won't come by spot duty. <laughs> Anybody ever, ever heard of mm -hmm. spot duty? Come on now. Yeah. It, it, what is spot duty then? Since you say, yeah. yeah. What is spot duty? In the natural. Anybody know? Spot uh, anybody heard of spot duty? Spot clean or something? Spot duty. <laughs> you know anybody who's been employed? Mm -hmm. Huh? Yes. And uh, all of a sudden, they needed, you know, a particular, huh? Uh, yeah, you, you, yeah. You, it's, on, it's in there. Uh, I get it for y'all. <laughs> Say, for instance, if you were working in a particular department, mm -hmm. but you learned something else mm -hmm. in another department, mm -hmm. and that was not your assignment, mm -hmm. but they knew you were qualified. Yeah. <laughs> that is what spot duty is. The Holy Spirit dropped that in my belly this morning. He said, most of us don't understand we're on spot duty. Wow. And God is trying to shift our understanding. He's trying to bring upgrade to us. Most of us, our duties is membership. But God says, on spot duty, we're going to understand what sonship is. He's qualifying us to do something, to step outside of our sphere. And that is what the greatest mystery of all is about. It's not necessarily about you being saved from is you being saved for. Amen? That is the key, y'all. That is the purpose. That's the reason why everything exists. That's why there's such a synergy in everything. When we look at the order of creation, we can see there's a divine pattern. Likewise in the church, he's given us the divine pattern. He's given us precepts and, and he's given us instructions and he's given us wisdom on how we can become a people that understand that we're not just going through the motions, mm -hmm. but we've been commissioned yes. for spot duty. Yes. Yes. For something other than what I'm so used to doing. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's an expectation on you. Yes. You know what? It's a great sacrifice because when they put you on spot duty, you could be at $17 an hour mm -hmm. and then there's another department that's $9. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. So you're not going to cry and complain about, well, I, you know, what you going to do? And it work in two ways. You can have it at a department at $9 and go work for 7 mm -hmm. or 17 mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it's not the compensation. It's you being available, yeah. you being trained, you being activated, you being empowered. You get what I'm saying? And God wants us, to, and that's a level of flexibility. And that's what the mystery is, is that God has brought us out to bring us in, but he wants to use us as an instrument and an extension of what the kingdom is all about on the inside of us. He wants to transition us and shake us from the stupor of being conceived in sin and iniquity so we can awake to righteousness. And be about our father's business. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Go to Romans 5. Romans 5. <laughs> Greatest mystery. God lives in mankind. He just don't live in us just so we can express in ourselves independently of him. Amen. Amen. 5 and 17. I actually got the message Bible. We're going to read King James. It's kind of hard to pull up the message Bible because they all scramble. no definitive numbers. But the King James said, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace. <laughs> Tell your neighbor abundance. abundance. Of grace and uh, <clears throat> the gift of righteousness. Right? 
shall reign in life by who? One. Not two. Not God and something else. Am I right? It's not an addendum. Reign in life by one. One. Not by my wife. Not by my husband. One. And when one reigns, what happens? There's abundance of what? Grace and abundance of righteousness so that I can reign in this life, not the one to come. Yes. So the greatest mystery of all was so that we can reign in this life. That God lives in mankind with the auspices of him, empowering us enough to not only just be uh, uh, in the earth, but not, and see, most of us just want to make sure we're not of the earth. Which most of us, is, most of the church, not this church because we don't have those issues, but most churches have a problem staying clean, staying committed, and staying connected. That's what we do. We, instead of reigning in the abundance of grace and righteousness, understanding that I'm connected to God and there's an assignment and a mission that he invested in me, he divested in me 2,000 years ago so that mankind can once again become a new species in the earth. We are so aggravated and so fixated on our perplexities and our complexities and our issues and our all the ites and plights and the stuff we're going through that we've left off our first works. And our first works is to have communion and dominion in the earth. So Christmas being in the manger is greater than us trying to figure out why it wasn't no more room in the end. <laughs> and if it was three, or uh, how many uh, magis it was, which it wasn't three. Am I right? And the shepherds didn't see him as a baby. They seen him as two years old. That's why Herod gave the edict to destroy all those that were two and under. So all those fables and lies that we've been mystified by and infected with. A long time ago we did Christmas Will Come Again. And it was like an eight CD. Oh, no, it was cassettes. <laughs> we talked about the whole mystery. We dissected the wise.